So what's the form and organization of heaven? The lesson this morning said, the form of heaven is of such a nature that everyone is a kind of center, thus a center of communications, and therefore of happiness from all. Each angel in the Lord's eyes is the center of heaven. I want you to picture a smooth pool of water that has just had a stone dropped into it. From the spot where the stone enters the water, a series of concentric circles spreads out, continuing in perfect form until striking some object or boundary. There's a sense in which each of our lives, many times each day, can be compared to the effect of this stone. Our actions affect those around us, and through them can affect a still broader circle continuing out from each of us as a center. The effect of our actions on others can be for good or for ill. If we do something kind or generous for someone else, even a small courtesy, the person will be somewhat more likely to offer a similar kindness to someone else. Likewise, if we treat someone else rudely or impatiently, that person will perhaps be more likely to be short-tempered with somebody else. Of course, the effect of our behavior is not absolute. The effect is dependent in part on the basic quality of the people we interact with. A self-centered person will accept a kindness, but perhaps consider the giver a fool to be taken advantage of. He will show kindness only if he expects to be repaid for his action in the future. A good person, on the other hand, will accept a kindness and feel gratitude that shows itself in benefits to others with no thought of repayment. Swedenborg relates the story of a man who had recently entered the spiritual world. When he realized he was in the other life and now had no position, possessions, such as home, property, and all else that he had had in the world, he became anxious, not knowing where he should go or where he would live since he could no longer provide for himself. He was taught that the Lord would provide what he needed. Then he had his every need provided by the angels around him. When he was then left to think alone from charity, he began to reflect on how he could repay so great a kindness. Rather than harboring a grudge that he had been deprived of his worldly possessions, he was feeling grateful for what he had recently received and felt indebted to someone for having received it. Because of his reaction, he was taken immediately into heaven. He was ready to receive and share the blessings that the Lord gives to all angels. Heaven is heaven partially because of the way that blessings flow from every person to every other person, how they're shared by all. Everyone who's in heaven takes delight in serving others. Each angel desires to communicate his or her blessings to all other angels. Each seeks to serve others. Jesus told his disciples, 
whoever of you desires to be first shall be servant of all. This takes place in two different forms in the life after death. Firstly, those who are evil and seek to rule over others because they love themselves end up being relatively powerless and miserable evil spirits doing menial jobs of service just to earn food and avoid punishment. They want to be first, but they end up being last. But the first are also a servant of all in heaven. The leaders of communities of angels refer to themselves as servants of the whole community, that they seek to serve all the angels in those communities. So in one sense, the leader is less free than everybody else because he's trying to wisely think of the welfare of each person in that heavenly community. And yet, that's the very quality that helps that person to be a good leader. We're told in heaven that those who are the greatest there are servants more than others because they're in the greatest obedience and the deeper humility than the rest. Concerning such individuals, we read the following. Those who are in heaven are above others in intelligence and wisdom from the truths of faith and are in such humility that they attribute everything of power to the Lord and nothing to themselves. For this reason, they do not place anything of glory or joy in having dominion, but in serving. And when they are in that state, they are in dominion, and also in glory, and in joy above others, yet not from the love of dominion or control, but from the affection of love and charity, which is that of serving others. For the Lord flows with powers into those who are humble, but not into those who are puffed up, because the former receive that inflowing life, but the latter reject it. In heaven, no one regards another person as a servant. Even when they're talking about the, what the wisest course of action would be, there are no directives from one person to another dictating what should be done. We read, in their conversation, there is nothing of command from one to another. For no one wishes to be master and so to look upon another as a servant but everyone wishes to minister to and serve the others. It would be hard for many people to picture what the interaction of a group of angels would be like. One of the wonderful images of this interaction that were given in the teachings of the new church is that of a choir of angels seen by Swedenborg. We're told that in this choir there were many angels who were thinking and speaking the same. And this is how it's described. And what is wonderful, though there were many, yet they all still all thought and spoke as one. Thus, they represented a single image. And this occurred because none of them desired to do anything from himself, still less to preside over the rest and lead the choir. For whoever does this is of himself instantly separated from the rest. But the angels allowed themselves to be led mutually by each other, thus all individually and collectively by the Lord. All the good people who come into the other life are brought into this kind of harmonious agreement. One of the wonders of heaven is that all is that because all seek to serve each other 
and all share the delights of one another, the joy of all is magnified many times. Each individual is a center from which blessings flow out to all others in heaven, and likewise, blessings from everyone else flows into the individual as a center. Consequence of this heavenly order is that each new angel that is added to heaven, the happiness of all is increased. We're told that the order of heaven that allows for this wonderful and complete sharing of blessings is beyond our comprehension. Well, it's a quality of the angels to share their blessings. It's a quality of evil to not only not communicate blessings to others, but actually to strive to extinguish or suffocate their joys and happiness. Nothing of the wonderful order of heaven can exist in hell. The reason is quite simple. We read, nothing else works to destroy the form and order of heaven than the love of self. Those who are dominated by the love of self seek to take whatever enjoyment flows in from others, take it to themselves, concentrate it in themselves, and turn it into the filthiness of self. The teachings for the new church tell us, many people place eternal happiness in becoming great after the life of the body and in being served by others, even by angels. And when they may themselves be willing to serve no one unless for the sake of self, with a hidden view of being served themselves. They're saying that they wish then to serve the Lord alone is false. For those in the love of self wish to have even the Lord serve them. And so far as this not, is not done, they withdraw. Thus they carry in their heart the desire to become lords themselves and to reign over the universe. We, of course, live neither in heaven nor hell, but there's much in our lives that are affected by the same rules that govern the life after death. We have many opportunities to share the blessings that we've received, working in harmony with others, with results that far exceed an equal number of separate individuals. We also have many opportunities to extinguish or suffocate the joys of others, endeavoring to dominate over others by sheer force, with results that are unhappy for all involved. Our lives are a center of influence for many people. We can be an influence for good or an influence for evil. We have an opportunity to experience something of the same joy that the angels experience as they work together to accomplish the Lord's work. Their ability to have such a tremendous effect comes not from their own power, but because the Lord is working through them. We likewise can be incredibly useful instruments for the Lord's work on earth. But to do so, we have to do our part to rid ourselves of the tendencies we have towards a host of bad habits that all stem from considering our own interests as more important than those of others, and our own perspective as being the only one that exists. We need to fight impatience in its many forms. We need to fight both the subtle and open methods of coercing others to follow our plans and opinions. We need to pray for the humility that will help us to recognize the many ways in which we can genuinely serve those around us. The close of this regular service, the sacrament of the Holy Supper will be offered. This is the perfect image 
of a human being approaching the Lord, asking for his love, represented by the bread of the Holy Supper, asking for his wisdom, represented by the wine of the Holy Supper, and receiving it within our own lives. So there's a way in which each of us as individuals need to try to accomplish this. But we also can work together with others. Each of us as individuals can work on not speaking, acting, or thinking from the tendencies that stand in the way of heavenly order, and each of us individually can receive some of the heavenly blessings that accompany spiritual rebirth or regeneration. Consider, however, the accumulated effect of these efforts that can exist within the, the church group we have here. Each of us has many ways in which we can contribute to the life of this congregation. Each of us can be a center of influence for good in what we say and do. As we seek to serve each other and together serve the church and community in its broadest form, each day will bring new delights. Each new member that joins us can increase the potential and actual usefulness of the group. As we individually look to the Lord and try to live a good life, loving one another as he's loved us, the presence of the Lord among us can increase. Our usefulness as a group will increase. Each of us can be a tremendous influence for good for many others. Each of us can be a center of all, not because we're so important, but because the Lord can be with us, each of us, in our lives, his life into ours. And in reality, it will be his presence with us that is truly the center of all. Amen.